Hi everyone! Welcome to a new episode of the Whippet Podcast. I'm Cassie, also known as Crafty Cassie, and I am your hostess for today. So, it has been an incredibly long time since I have done a video or an update to my channel of any kind. Um, if you're curious, for those of you that are returning viewers, viewers, <laughs> why such the big absence and I will definitely explain that a little bit more in the um, at the end when I just kind of talk about my life and the things that are going on here and um, for those of you who are new if you look at the timestamps date stamps whatever that are in the description box it will show that it's been well over a year since I've posted I do encourage all of you to watch those past episodes. They're not the greatest, and I'm not saying this one's going to be any better, but this is a, hopefully, um, a new season, so that was one of the admin things I wanted to discuss. Um, I am starting season two, mostly just because it has been so long since I have done an episode. Um, the person I was back then may not necessarily be the person I am now. Do I feel different? Yes, in some ways, and in other ways, no. So, with that said, I do have some things that I've set aside that I've been collecting over the while, which is kind of, you know, a normal knitter thing, always filling that stash. Um, I do have some projects that I've set aside that I have completed, um, and I have... I do, and I have a bag right here, <laughs> right over my shoulder here, um of projects that I'm currently working on. So one thing I wanted to also address is that while knitting is a big part of my life, it's not the only crafty thing I do in my life. In fact, if you can see over here, um, there's a wooden house looking thing. I do miniatures and I like to build doll houses and um, I like to keep journals and I like to um, you know, do all sorts of crafty things. Um, so I uh, will definitely be including them as I work on them. Um, so I may not necessarily be doing just knitting in this podcast anymore. It's any whip that I might be doing at the time. So uh, for those of you who don't know what a whip is, a whip is a work in progress, which is why it's called the Whip It Podcast. Because I am notorious for starting projects and then cleaning my room and putting it aside, forgetting about it, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I remember when I started working on this, and boy, I don't remember what I was making this into. <laughs> so, I know that happens to a lot of crafters. Um, I've, you know, had the pleasure of meeting quite a few people. In fact, my craft room um, is kind of filled with you know, all of my hobbies, uh, the number one being buying craft supplies. Um, yes, that is a hobby because a lot of people will know that they can buy the stuff. It takes um, a whole other set of effort to actually use the craft supplies. So that's kind of my conundrum is I'm definitely a collector of craft supplies and I want to be more of a user of craft supplies. Um, my room is a hot mess and I live in chaos. I'm going to say that right now. Um, I've got a mixture of makeup and knitting and crafting stuff here on my desk, so... <laughs> um, and it's always a work in progress. It also doesn't help that I opened up my own business. I have opened up Crafty Cassie as a um, business. I have not... Um, gotten to the point where I am photographing yet and posting them on my website, but I do have a uh, storefront on Store Envy, and when that is open I will let you know, but it's going to be, um, my updates are definitely going to be around the full moon. So whatever day the full moon falls on is the days that I will be doing updates. Uh, just because I'm basing my um, Crafty Cassie off of things that I really like, and I love the mythical, and the mysterious, and the magical, if you will. Um, so I thought it would be quite um, fitting to have my business have some aspect of that. So the full moon is when I will be doing my updates. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started into some finished 
objects now that I've gotten some of the, um, I have a hair in my eye, sorry. I'll do this guy. So my first object happens to be this sock. Um, this is a Patton's Croy yarn. Um, I want to say this is a turquoise, something turquoise. You can see that striping. And then I used um, a Mina Phillips pattern, which you can kind of see here, but it kind of gets a little bit lost into, it's just kind of more of a texture pro, uh, pattern. And this was from her New York Sock Club patterns. Um, this pattern, I don't remember which one it was. I knit this at the beginning of the year. Um, one thing I don't like about the Patton's Croy socks is that for whatever reason, the yarn, and I have its mate here, it's just not on a sock blocker, um, but it's yarn, tends to just slip through my fingers and the sock just ends up monstrous on my foot. So, yeah. A little sock blocker with Crafty Cassie. Um, who did I get these from? I got these from an Etsy, a Sally on Etsy. can't remember who it was. Um, so this is one pair of socks from my box of socks. Um, knit along that uh, Kristen of Volan Fine Yarns does every year. Um, every year I try to knit up 12 pairs of socks and every year I get nowhere close to that. So, um, we'll see if that's what is the case for this year. So, the next sock I have here is this guy. And this, I forget the girl's name, but something Newman. And this was her uh, floral bouquet colorway. Um, it's another box uh, store yarn. Um, I think I got it on sale. And the pattern I did is the Layla sock pattern. You can kind of see it's got this lacy portion up here. And then just a simple... Um, lace design down here. Um, these ones took a lot longer, especially once you got past the lace, then it really sped up because this pattern is just on that one one needle. Um, but I do remember that taking, these taking longer than I anticipated. These were supposed to be like my February socks and I ended up not getting them done until like April. So, and I do have its mate done. Oh, but its end is not sewn in. Hmm. Hmm. I'll set that aside so I can finish that. Um, I do have another sock here. And this is um, another Mina Phillips pattern design. Again, this is another Patton's Croy. I want to say this was um, forest or something of that nature. Um, super big on my sock blocker, and this is one of her uh, Nina Mutt Phillips um, New York Sock Club patterns, and the mate, so we got both of them in, and the ends are woven in. Now they don't match, as you can see. Um, I'm not particularly um, picky about my socks matching when it comes to striping, um, but I definitely um, try, I guess. I don't think I really tried on this one just because I loved the way it came up either way that I just wasn't too, wasn't too picky about that. So, um... One of the first socks that I finished this year, I remember these ones I got done, like, when did I get these done? I think I threw these on for Christmas and then finished them um, in January. So, um, so these, these won't count as part of my Christmas, or not my Christmas, they won't count as part of my box of socks, um, for them, for Kristen, but they'll definitely, 
Um, I can put these in my box now, in my normal box, and wear these. But this yarn, this is a D Desert Vista Dye Works, and this is in her Pocahontas zombie colorway. I think this is a S Colors of the Zombodies, I believe is what the this colorway is called. Um, so in between each of the main stripes is a zombie stripe there, um, which I think is hilarious. I love it. Um, I have two more skeins. I've already knit up the Snow White one, um, and this was, like I said, the Pocahontas, and I think I have, like, I don't know if I have Sleeping Beauty or Cinderella. I can't remember, and then I know for sure that I have the Little Mermaid, um, just because Little Mermaid is my favorite princess, so of course I had to have her. I just, I haven't knit her yet. Um, all of my socks, by the way, are knit on, for myself, on a US 1 or a 2.25, I think that's a US 1, um, knitting needle, by the way. Um, I don't think I've been saying what knitting size needle I use. Um, that is just the size that I use on my socks. I usually go up to 1.5 if I'm knitting socks for my husband. These ones, I remember these ones. These are just some plain vanilla socks. Um, these are also some Pat and Croy socks. These are the Jacker Turquoise. Um, and I really like how these ones turned out. These ones definitely fit my foot better. So, again, on my US 1 needle size. So, just some basic socks. I'm just kind of getting through them because they're vanilla socks. Some of them aren't vanilla socks. Um, I have quite a few projects that I've completed in the last few months. Um, so, I just... I don't know. This is just how I am, I guess. Maybe we'll put that way. Um, I don't know if there's going to be show notes for this. Mostly because every time I say there's going to be show notes, I forget and I never get them typed up. So, I'm not going to make any promises. But if I do write show notes, they will be the the link will be in the description bar below. Hopefully. Um, and I have one more sock. Um, I just can't find its mate for some reason. So I need to, and I know I knit it. That's the funny part. I know I knit the mate of this guy. This. Is, I remember the colorway being something like Stormy Days or something of that name. Foggy something or other. I don't remember. It had something to do with weather. I remember that. And this is a woolless yarn. I get this at Hobby Lobby. Oh, who's the people who make this woolless? Um, it's got a lot of stretch to it. And I've made a lot of this. I've knit a lot of these yarns before. Um, and again, this is it's a vanilla sock. And it is on my US ones. So, there's that. And then, let's see here. I have two more finished items. And then we're going to, going to go into works in progress. Now, the ends are not sewn in on these. Oh no, I have three more finished items. And then we'll move into completed items. Um, so this is a washcloth that I knit um, using sugar and cream. I actually have the label for this. In the potpourri ombre colorway. It's just cream and then it's got a little bit of um, pink, purple, and turquoise speckling. Um, this pattern that I used is the uh, four washcloths in one. It's a free pattern. You can download off Ravelry. Um, I just basically sat 
on my computer, put this on some metal straight needles. Um, I'm not going to block this, so that's why I'm saying this. Um, I'm trying to attempt to do um, the yarn hoarder, um, her challenge, you know, knitting 52. Wow, this cotton really is. I don't know if you can see it, but I see a lot of dust. Um, but she's doing the 52 washcloths because I guess washcloths make really good gifts. Um, personally, it, it, if you don't have friends to give gifts to, why am I making these? Um, that's where I'm at right now, which is why I've only made two. Um, so they might be going into my own personal stash. I'm not sure yet. I do have a few friends. Um, I just don't know. I know this one's a gift for a friend, for sure. This is actually a cotton yarn that I dyed. This is part of this pattern too. This is the um, basic washcloth and it's just a uh, garter stitch basically. And this yarn I call my rubber ducky time. Um, it's one of the very first colorways I ever tried dyeing. And it is just a blue, I don't know if the gray is really showing up. It's probably not. So we've got gray here on this ridge. It's coming up blue. Um, and then, yeah, hey, that's funny. The, the There, you can kind of see like a couple different tones of blue. It's actually gray and then yellow. So I wanted the gray to be um, kind of like, um, like the bathroom or um, kind of like that silver iridescent kind of color of the bubbles. Um, and then the blue is the water, and then the yellow was definitely the rubber ducky. Um, I wanted it to be something like bath time or something of that nature. Um, I came up with this colorway while my best friend was pregnant. And so when I dyed it, I had intended on making a whole bunch of washcloths for her, for her son. And I'm just now getting this knit. So he's two now, by the way. So that's how long I've been experimenting with um, dyeing. And then this is my newest square for my um, Cozy Memories uh, like quilt style blanket. Um, and in this one I am just putting singles, not singles, um, small blocks of yarn from finished projects. So that's what this is. So this is definitely a memory so I can go back and think, hmm, I remember this project being this. I wonder if I can go and find it or did I give that to someone or, you know, something like that. So I am missing quite a few colors. In fact, I think I have enough scraps looking at over here that I could probably finish this square and start another one. Um, I'm going to set that aside because it also, this last square I added in, started coming unraveled. So I need to look into that and see about picking those dishes up and fixing it. Oh, and my last project is actually something wearable. But da 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 I love how monstrous this is. It's finished. It's not blocked. It is not, um doesn't have seams, I mean, ends sewn in or anything, but it is ultra cush, ultra lush. Oh, I love this. Um, I'll just take off my ears. Um, so I th thought it would be really cool, or uh, not thought, um, Kristen of Volenvine Yarns, and the uh, Yarn Hoarder part, uh, podcast um, started to do the uh, Waiting for Rain cowl. And she ended up frogging hers and not doing it, um, but she loved the pattern just as much as I did. And I can't tell you how many times I started and frogged this pattern before I finally got it done. Um, I think I started this like a total of five times. The last time I ripped it out, I had three of these wedges done. Those wedges are pure lace. Okay, they're, they're insane. 
these they're like supposed to be slashes of lace that come in through your shawl and it does it's beautiful and this blue is so yummy so the two yarns that I've got going on in here this variegated blue and brown one is Madeline Tosh in her Tosh Merino singles um, which is a, a singles 100% merino um, in the colorway Mare. And then the yarn, the blue, the lace bit is that same yarn but in the colorway Ink. And Mare got discontinued halfway through when I made this. So uh, I realized about halfway through this that I was going to need a second skein of Mare. <laughs> Uh, because I knit super loosely. My tension is a lot looser than most people. Now I did use the yarn that the pattern called for. Um, yarn. The needle. Did I say the needle? The needle size that the, the pattern called for. I don't know if I got gauge. I didn't swatch. I just knit. Which is kind of my typical standard. Um, which isn't always smart. But when this blocks out, which is funny because, you know, when you see the picture, it blocks out to like this massive shawl. And I can't wait for having a massive shawl. Something that I can both wrap around my shoulders, you know, when I'm out. And stuff with friends. I can, you know, just keep me warm like a little old lady or wrap around my neck and wear it more, you know more modern style, um, whatever, be, uh, but while it's not blocked, it's kind of a narrow, um, a narrow shawl, and it really took me being overseas, um, and in my downtime when I can just write on the pattern, um, to really keep my stitch count. So it really kept, that was my biggest issue, is I just kept losing my stitch count. Um, so when I block this and get the end sewn, I'll be super excited because that means I can use it. And I can give my other two shawls a break that I've been wearing as scarves all last year. All right. Time for some whips, because that is what this podcast is all about. It's about those whips. So I have a whip here that has been a whip for a very long time. So this is a Yarn B baby yarn in the Marbled Elephant colorway. It's just kind of like this beautiful gray tone. Um, speckling. It's just, I love it. And I actually am in a really good spot um, to show you guys because I'm on Sleeve Island of my very first adult-ish sweater. really weird because that's all the decreases I'm supposed to be doing but I've clearly got two more sets of decreases I need to do over here I'm really flipping confused and I'm already on the length to start getting rid oh my goodness looks like I'm gonna be ripping back on this all right, so this is Tin Can Knits, um, it's their free knitting pattern. I can't think of what it's called. Holy cow, it was downloaded onto my phone. I'm pretty sure none of those, none of my documents got transferred over, so that's sad. Um, but this is a gift for a friend, and yeah. So anyways, this is it. She's not a very big person, so that helps. 
and the knitting needles I was I was using some round in the round ones um, but now I want some DPNs these are just some um, oh I forget just some bamboo ones that I picked up at the local store and this is in the five millimeter or the US eight double pointed needles and then you drop down to the size six for the um oh no, no don't pull for the um ribbing so I thought I was getting really close to being done I am not fun facts fun 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 facts so we'll go with what's in this bag here so this is actually a project bag that I made um it's not perfect definitely needs some work um, but uh, it's a learning experience and it's the first one I've ever sewn so that is something I am going to be working on all right so this guy here is actually going to be a um, announcement I wanted to, or something I would like to pitch to you guys um, so this is the Tiny Tassel Shawl. Um, it's a very simple, very, very, very simple shawl. I'm knitting this for my mother-in-law, um, who I call Mama Sita. She is a very knit-worthy friend. Um, and this is another Madeline Tosh Moreno, or Tosh Moreno Singles. Um, it's a 100% Moreno base. And this is in the colorway f uh, forestry, I want to say, but it's greens with some pink speckling. And the tassels are actually going to be made out of a color, out of a mini skein, um, a unicorn tail um, in a pink that matches that. So I actually bought yarn to make not just one of these, but two. It's a, it's a very... Um, complementary to this as well. It's got the greens, but it's also got like it's more of a tealy green rather than this this dark foresty green. So I'm super excited to work on that. Um, but I want to finish obviously finish hers first. Um, and the needles I'm using are some of my rosewood needles that I got from Knit Picks. Yeah, Knit Picks. And these are in the US fives or 3.75 millimeter needles and I th think I'm just using whatever um, the pattern called for rather than using gauge um, so if this ends up being a much bigger shawl then I'm just gonna knit the entire skein like so that my mother-in-law has the because um, she likes to wrap things around her shoulders rather than wear it as a, as a um, scarf so um, that's definitely going to be as big as I can get it all right, let's do this one because I am mostly finished with this. Well, I'm finished with the current square. So this is a cozy memory blanket. <gasps> the traditional way. <laughs> and not this way where it's, you know, been blocked out in um, that Knit Picks uh, palette yarn in the colorway dough. So this is just a bunch of yarns that I've collected um, so like these five here, so one, two, three, four, and five um, are a group of minis that I got from um, Cat Sandwich Fibers um, back when she was doing yarn clubs. And this is the dried roses on my wall. Um, then I got this colorway as a freebie for th this month, I think, because this month came out a little bit late. Um, this pink and blue, the green, yellow, orange, and this red color. Um, so these, oh, and this purple here. So these three came as single mini skeins. 
and these three came as a group of gradient mini skeins um, and that's what I'm making this whole thing out of is mini skeins um, those came from my local yarn store um, in Coopville, Washington I want to say they're but that is um, would be yarns would be island yarns I'm not exactly sure but she does hand dye some of her own yarn these two here, this speckly one, and then this pink and black speckly one, these two came from Pearl Yarns in Portland, Oregon when I went down with my um, husband and my father-in-law um, when he came to visit from Thailand. That's happened too. Um, I picked those two mini skeins up along with some fiber. Uh, then so basically these are just mini skeins either from um, small indie dyers or from local yarn shops from towns that I've actually been to so these are kind of just like a, it's a cozy memory blanket of my um, travels and this purple one here is a unicorn tail Madeline Tosh unicorn tail um, and I have actually this one and this guy Nope, that's the remnant of that guy. Where's the other one? There it is. This guy actually is caked up, needs to be added to it, and then I need to put this one in it. These are from my local yarn store um, over in Mount Vernon. It's about a 45 minute drive from where I'm currently at. These will be the next ones added to this blanket um, in here as well. And I'm trying to remember that when I finish a store, if I can or finish a group of mini skeins that I got from that one location to add them uh, to sew in my ends. Um, I've been pretty good about that and I remember to sew in quite a few and I've forgotten quite a few more. There's still a lot of tails in here so that is definitely being worked on. So my battery is about to die so I'm going to go and charge that and I'll be right back. Alright, so I'm back with a fully charged battery and it's a whole new day because my husband came home and he wanted me to do things with him. So I eat, eat dinner and hang out and all that jazz. So that's what I did last night. So I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly I was talking about this blanket and I was kind of rushing through talking about the ends and such. Um, and how I was going to be adding these colors in next. Um, I do in my um, LYS tour bag from last year? Yeah, from 2018, from this last year. Um, keep all of the minis that I'm going to be adding to this bag. So I'm going to go ahead and pull all those out so we can talk about it. There's that. That, the needles that I was using. Um, I found a wrapper, candy wrapper. So these are from my local yarn uh, store. These uh, Madeline Tosh um, unicorn tails, and I actually picked wrote when I picked these up. I got these in January of sixteen. So then I'm finally using them. That's awesome. Um, then I have these guys. So Cedar House. Go ahead and pull these aside because these were all got in. That's another cedar house. Yeah. So I picked up quite a few of these cedar house yarns. I got these at Apple Yarns, um, which is up in Bellingham, Washington. It's another local yarn store to me. Um, I just don't get up there as often because it's about an hour drive up there. Um, but my husband and I were up there for Camp Phoenix, um, a summer camp that I've been doing last year was my fourth year total so that was awesome I loved that um, love Camp Phoenix but we got there a little early so we stopped and had lunch and went to Apple Yarns and I picked up these six minis from Apple Yarns so these are going to go on there next um, and it does have the colorway so this pink one here is Love Freckles
This blue with purple and brown speckling is called Magic in the Air. Love that. Beautiful. This kind of mauve color with green speckling is Forced Floor. This white with blue um, speckling is frostbite so can't wait to add that this mauvey one with blues and browns um, very similar to forest floor is called lichen this one here is very much it's more pink than the others with kind of um, I'm gonna say blue and brown but because of that under base it's coming up kind of purpley and this one's called wildflowers really see that Look through so that's all of those ones that are going in next um, and this is on their sapling sock sprout which is a 75 25 superwash nylon um, and there's 110 yards so they're 20 grams uh, mini skeins and I'm using about 10 grams um, 8 to 10 grams um, on each square roughly and then I stopped we went to Seattle for why did we go to Seattle for an event oh tacos and tequila um, was a festival in um, Seattle that we went to um, but yeah we went to te uh, tacos and tequila love me tacos oh my goodness in fact, it was nachos and margaritas that um, led to me meeting my husband. So that's uh, had to go and say yes to the things that brought us together. Um, so we were in Seattle and we had some time. So we stopped at a yarn store in Seattle. A tea Cozy, I want to say. I think it was. Yes. I, I, pretty sure it was Tea Cozy Yarns. So my husband went over to Fitzpatrick's or Fitzgerald's or whatever the Irish pub was across the street and I went and sat down and knit and then bought me some goodies and these are part of them. So these are some hedgehog fibers and these are sock minis and so they are 20 grams or 80 meters. It's 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon. Now that is the highest merino nylon content I've ever heard of in a, a sock yarn. Um, but this blue colorway here, blue speckled, is kimono. Go with this other speckly one. This is boombox. On a natural base with all those speckles. Look how beautiful. And then I got three sol uh, semi-solids, and this is highlighter, this bright, beautiful yellow. It's probably going to, yeah, it does blow up my camera, but then again, my ring light is blowing out all the colors. This um, kind of like baby, almost bubblegum pink. Let's say it's closer to bubblegum pink than it is baby pink. Um, this is Harajuku, and that's blown out too. You can kind of tell that that's pink. And then this beautiful royal blue is electric. Now there are a bunch of other minis um, associated with, and these will go in next after I finish those Apple Yarns, the Cedar Cedar House Yarns uh, mini skeins that I had bought from Apple Yarns. I'll add those in last. Um, looks like I'm going to have to be picking up some minis because, oh, I did pick up more minis, which is actually, since I talked about all those yarns that I just picked up, is going to segue us very naturally into dun, da, 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 new purchases so I saved the bag which isn't something normally I do but I just picked this I just got this order in like yesterday the day I started recording and look how cute this bag is does that not scream Florida to you because this screams Florida to me I've actually lived in Florida um, so my parents migrated down eh, migrated yeah um, down to Florida when I was in second grade. Uh, my mom did and um, I spent my school years there and spent my summers up in Washington at my Nana's ranch. Um, so this does say, it says both Florida and like Arizona. 
which is where my grandparents, um, my mom's dad and stepmom live. So the I used to spend a couple weekends with them every summer. And yeah, so I picked up this. This is from a Casual Fashion Queen. These will be added in next. And these are some gorgeous, gorgeous minis. And they are um, horror movie themed. So when I saw that she had these mini skeins, I immediately was like, bye, bye. She also had minis of some other um, colorways that I wanted to get my hands on and I only picked up one because I'd already spent so much money on the horror movie mini skein collection. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out of the bag and show it to you guys and I'm going to apologize for the crinkling. I'm gonna edit out as much as possible but um, while I'm holding it up showing it to you in the packaging it's gonna be a little crinkly and I apologize. Alright so these mini skeins are not just Halloween horror movies. It is actually a Stephen King um, movie collection. And so the, the movies that she chose were Pet Cemetery, The Green Mile, Carrie, Desperation, Here's Johnny, The Shining, The Mist, The Trash Can Man, which is The Stand, Christine, Yol Float 2 from It, and Booyah Moon from Leslie's Story. Um, so I'm going to try and match these up correctly, but I can't make any promises because some of these colors are very similar. And so she, like here she's got a light gray is from the stand and a dark gray is Leslie's story. But they're kind of the same tone of gray to me, so I'm, hopefully I'll get it right. Alright, so I'm going to assume this is the light gray, and this is a Trash Can Man from The Stand. All those specklies. And then... I'm going to say this is the orange. This is Desperation. Definitely looks a little on the pinker side to me. Uh, this is definitely pink, so this is Carrie. I'm going to say this is the dark gray, and this is Booyah Moon from Leslie's Story. Looks blue to me, but I might be wrong. You have this bright yellow here, and this is Yol Float 2 from it. This pale yellow is Here's Johnny from The Shining. This green is Pet Cemetery. This blue is The Shining. No, sorry, The Mist. My bad. Um, let's see here. Dark gray, bright yellow. We'll do this one. This is red and white, which is Christine. I'm guaranteeing that one. Light gray, blue. Okay, so then I'm going to say this is the brown. And this is the green mile. So I'm going to try and hold these up in order. So Pet Cemetery, Green Mile, Carrie. Desperation, and here's Johnny, and then these five, The Mist, Trash Can Man, Christine, You'll Float 2, and Booyah Moon. So I may have these in, in incorrect order, but, um, so there's ten total, 
I want to say this was like $70. So, um, they're $7 a piece roughly, which is pretty good. You actually got a deal on them because I'm pretty sure this mini here, which is, um, Jessica Jones was $8. So single mini is eight. There it goes. Look at how beautiful that is. Look at all those little, you can see some speckling in there. Really see it right there on that end bit. Um, Jessica Jones, for those of you who don't know, is probably my favorite superhero right now. Um, I just, I really identify with her character. Um, so, and I don't know if this pink really screams Jessica Jones, because Jessica Jones, while she is very feminine, she does prefer to wear black and dark colors and always has really pink lips. I also really love Kristen Ritter as um, an actress. Um, and as a person, I can really, really appreciate all the things that she's doing. She actually directed one of her own episodes, so that was like super awesome and, and amazing. So, um, yeah, I can't... I just... I, I needed this in my life. I really want a full skein of this, but they sh it always sells out so fast. I was so happy that I was able to get a, a mini of it. So I'm going to go ahead and put all that back, and I'll move on to the other... Oh, excuse me. Uh, hiccup. Um, a, um, the other new purchases that I've picked up that I kind of had stashed away, and I want to put them away. All right, so let's move on to another purchase I got. Was this beautiful baby? Um, I got this around Christmas time. This is from actually a friend of mine. I ordered it from her. This is from Pickle Dye Works. I actually know the um, the dyer behind this. Not like in person, so to speak, but I followed her from a makeup group, and then she started dyeing and knitting and all that other jazz. And so I've just kind of been loving on her. Um, so this is, it's a fingering yarn, so it's 100 grams, 438 yards. It doesn't have a yarn name, um, but it's superwash, 75% superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 5% stellina. It's really pretty and slightly sparkly. I don't know if this, there you can see that sparkle. So, and this was her Christmas colorway. Um, I don't remember what it was. She didn't write down what the yarn was called, but it was definitely a Christmas yarn. So I'm going to save this and probably knit this up as a Christmas um, socks. I picked up another set of yarn here. I don't... Oh. Yeah. And I got this guy from Cat Sandwich Yarns in her trusty base and this was one of the monthly sock yarns. I want to say this was February, um, maybe March. I'm not exactly sure. This was first, the colorway's first bloom and it is a 75-25 Superwash Merino Nylon and it's just beautiful tonal and I'm leaving it in the packaging for now. I'm going to take it out here in a minute but it's just beautiful. Screw it. I'll take it out. Just look at how beautiful all of that color is. Just gorgeous, all that speckling that's going on in there. You can see it. Right open a little bit so you can see some more of them. Gorgeous speckles. But it's super yummy. So I don't know if I'm going to knit this into a shawl or socks or what, but I, it's just beautiful. And I'm definitely excited to get this on the needles at some point. I just have to find what it calls to me, what it says it wants to be. And then I have this gorgeousness. Look at it. Ah! So, for those of you who don't know, I love Disney and Disney princesses and things like that. So anything that has to do with that, I have to buy. This is from one of my favorite dyers. Um, she is from England. This is Stranded Dye Works. This was on her solo singles base. Um, she's now renamed all of her bases, and I'm pretty sure it's just her Merino Singles now, is what she's calling it. It is 100% Superwash Merino. It is a single ply fingering weight, and this is the colorway Glass Slipper. 
so it is absolutely gorgeous. Ugh, I just love it. So, um, Cinderella is definitely on my top five princesses. Um, so the fact that I, you know, that Amy dyes this colorway, I just, I had to. So I had to get it. So that was a new purchase I picked up. And then I picked up some fabrics. So this fabric, I'm going to show them in pairs because I bought it with the intention of making project bags, which is one of the items that I will be having for sale in my shop once I get everything up and running. Um, right now I'm just mastering my project bag style. Um, so I do have some yarn sewn up, yarn, some fabric sewn up. I just haven't fully made them into bags yet, so once I start doing that, I'll start showing those to you guys. Um, but I bought them to go, so this will be my outer fabric, this beautiful kind of unicorn with hearts, stars, and moons around it, and this will be the inner fabric. I just thought that that went, those purple tones, uh, purple and pink tones really matched well. Um, and then I also picked up these two to go together. So these pretty dancing unicorns and then this kind of like chevron-esque type inner purple fabric. So those will eventually be in, made up and in, put in the store. Um, like I said, I am still playing with the, the fabric pattern um, that I want to use, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, there isn't really a whole lot else that I can show you that I've picked up crafty wise if I do I'll definitely show it in the next episodes things that I find um, there are other projects that I've been working on that I don't have at hand to show you so I will show you at a later date um, so until next time guys don't forget to subscribe if you liked any of the content that I showed you today um, I'm definitely going to be having other videos put up on this channel that are not just podcast related. They will be kind of like tutorials and other things like that. Um, I just, I also bought some like dollhouse room type stuff I want to do videos on. Um, I would love to do those as live streams. I just don't know how to do that just yet, so we need to figure that out. Um, look into some information about that stuff so maybe get a webcam so you guys can see me and then you can also see my desk um, definitely need to clean off the rest of my desk uh, and get it more organized right now it is the biggest hot mess you will ever see there's a mixture of makeup and crafting stuff all over it right now so I definitely want to remedy that um, So, yeah, if you don't want to stay around for a life update, I will see you guys next time in another video. Um, if you want to know more about me as a person, the crafter behind the podcast, then let's go ahead and get into it. So, I'm actually going to start knitting on this yarn while I am talking because one of the things I like to do is talk and do things with my hands. I do not like to be stagnant. So we'll pull this guy out. Um, so what has been going on in my life? Basically, what hasn't been going on in my life? A lot has happened since the last time I posted um, a podcast. I have completed my overseas work for now. Um, I may be going out next spring. Um, but as of right now, I am home for the foreseeable future, so that's awesome. Um, what else? Coming home was not that great. Um, unfortunately, being that, uh, being apart for that long and having very, um, limited connection 
um, as far as like communication goes. Um, was very hard on my marriage and I almost didn't come home. I almost came home not married, essentially. Um, so it's um, partly my fault, partly his fault, um, but it basically all boiled down to a lack of communication, so that sucked. Um, what else has happened? So I got home in November, we patched things up just like literally the week of Christmas, um, and then uh, we worked, came home, we were on different work schedules while we were trying to fix things out, giving each other some space because we were still so upset at each other. Now, now he's on the same shift as I am, um, so we're able to spend more time together, which has um, definitely helped a lot too. Then his dad came to visit. Um, my husband's father lives in Thailand. Um, I've mentioned that before in this podcast. And um, he has recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's early onset. Um, and he just... He's a good man. He is. I will give him that. He is a very good man. Um, but he... has his issues like most people do. So, um, while it didn't hurt our marriage, it definitely tried our marriage. So, um, what else? So his dad was here for the month of July. We went down to Portland. That was awesome. And then we went over to Winthrop, which was also awesome. We went horseback riding. Um, what else did we do while his dad was here? We... Um, I did notice he mentioned talking about how our house was really dark. Um, we live about as far north as you possibly can while still staying in the continental United States. Um, with the exception of, like, say, Maine. I think Maine is actually technically... Um, further north than us, um, but we don't have, and he was here in like our longer days, so you know the middle of summer, and I think the highest it got here was like 78, maybe 82. Um, it stays pretty uh, temperate year-round because it is an island that we live on, um, so we don't get a whole lot of um, extremes. Um, so that's nice. But, um, but his dad, again, is, is from a more, much more humid and much warmer climate, so he kind of struggled um, as far as that goes. Um, thankfully, he did pack some long sleeve shirts, so that helped a lot for him to stay warm at least. Um, and Portland was definitely a lot warmer for him too, and so was Winthrop. Um, just because we went further inland than what we normally live, so got a little bit more protected by that. Even though Portland is still a coastal city, it is um, south of us, so it's it's warmer. Um, what else have we done? We went to Camp Phoenix. Alex's mom came to visit. Um, And I will say that my relationship with her has definitely gotten um, significantly better over the year. Um, what else? So we were able to visit with her for a little bit. She's now back down in Mexico. Um, she thinks it's she's absolutely um, in love with Josie, her fur grandchild. Um, or her grandfur child is what she refers to Josie. Um, Josie is absolutely spoiled. They go on walks all the time, and I've gone on a couple of their walks, or part of their walks. Um, Josie would get these bursts of, like, energy right in the middle of it, and so she we call it Turbo Dog when she does that. Um, so she and I would run, and because my mother-in-law can't run, she's had knee surgery, so she 
was very thankful when I was able to do that with Josie because otherwise Josie just pulls um, kind of on the leash the entire time. So it definitely, those little bursts of energy definitely allowed um, for Josie to calm down and not pull so much on my, on Mamacita's, on the leash on Mamacita. So, um, what else? Uh, work, work still sucks, um, but I've got 14 months left on this contract. Oh, that was a thing. Um, I almost got out last February. Um, my contract ended and I had kind of a panic attack um, because I came back from working overseas and I just hadn't gotten my life situated fast enough and um, so I extended my contract um, so I am there now until January of 2020 um, and I cannot wait for that contract to be up um, I am now in school, so school will be starting next week, actually, so by the time I get this posted, probably, it will have already started, and I will be, um, basically neck deep in chemistry classes and homework, and so I'm not sure when this is going to go up, um, but hopefully, um, I can get it out sooner rather than later. Um, I do have a video that I'm editing right now for my beauty channel, um, So that's definitely, I'm pretty sure this is going to be next in queue for editing though. Um, so hopefully I've got like nine-ish more classes to go until I can apply for the nursing program. So hopefully I will be pretty close to being ready to enroll in classes or to apply to the nursing program. Um, when I'm done with my contract. So I am using kind of like a tuition assistance kind of program that my company offers. So um, so they're paying for my pre-nursing courses right now, So, which is the reason why I extended was so that I could get all these done and just transition and um, hopefully get done um, that much faster, be able to work that much sooner. Um, What else? We got chickens! So I will try to show the couple of pictures I've taken. Um, my husband and a buddy of ours are building a chicken coop as we, not really as we speak, they're out buying supplies right now. Um, they're buying dinner, groceries, stuff like that. And um, after this video, I am going to be going and getting a latch. Um, I've also got to get some stuff for my uniform for work so um, that's what I'll do while I'm out and then I don't have my phone on me and I have a buddy coming over with um, some stuff some patches he needs me to sew on his uniform um, so um, it's really all I can think about right now. Um, things are very kind of crazy and hectic around here now that we're entering into the fall season. Um, I've got a, not, a new boss at work and that's not going very well. Um, unfortunately, it's not going very well at all. Um, but it is what it is. About every year, year and a half, I get a new boss, um, because that's just the nature of the company that I work with, um, so, uh, Kitty is doing fine, he's definitely settling into his adulthood very well, I think, he's still very fat, he's still 14 pounds, roughly, um, the other night, he decided to come bursting in to the room. My husband called, says that uh, Kitty Spartan kicked the door, um, scared, scared my husband to no end. 